Hello everyone, today I want to talk about a topic I briefly touched on in another video and that is the idea that there are hidden costs to miniature wargaming. So let's say you're a new player, you've, you're you going to jump into miniature gaming or role playing game uh, miniatures and you want to get what you need. Well, you get your models, you get the rule books, and you want to start. But there's this whole other aspect and that's the hobby aspect where you have to assemble and paint these models. Now, if you go online and, and look at some of these advice videos or some of these professional techniques that they have out there, you can get overwhelmed pretty easily in my opinion because there's a lot of sophisticated stuff that people can recommend or people advise you to do that can add up really quickly in terms of money. I wanna assure people that uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money in order to get going on miniature gaming. In fact, I've been miniature gaming for 25 years and I buy almost the cheapest stuff you can imagine. And so I want to briefly go over what the bare minimum is that you can start this hobby with and still have good results. So I'm going to divide this video up into three parts. I'm going to go into the stuff that you really kind of have to have in order to do anything with this. And now it's true that you don't really need to paint your models. But let's assume that you want to paint your models because they're gonna look better. It's, it's a rewarding experience. I really recommend it. It looks better on the table. Let's just assume you wanna paint your models. If you don't wanna paint your models, this doesn't really matter. I don't know why you're watching this, but let's assume you wanna paint your models. You're just starting out, or maybe you wanna save some money and you want to look at what the, the minimum is that you can you can get, you can use to do that. Okay, so that's going to be the first part. The second part is the things that you don't absolutely need, but I would recommend. I think it make your life a lot easier to have these things. And the last part are purely optional things, things that I like, but not everyone's going to be into them. All right, so let's start off real quick. The first thing you're going to need, you're going to need a Zacto blade. You're going to need a Zacto knife of some kind. Uh, these are not very expensive. These are a couple of bucks. You can find them at any hobby store. You can find them at your at your hardware stores. Uh, yeah, they're not very expensive. The thing that you want to keep in mind is that you need them pretty small. You need them very sharp. Um, and you're going to go through them. These blades are not going to last forever. They'll last a reasonable amount of time. But eventually you're going to need to change the blades. And it's a good idea to keep them sharp. So that's thing number one. Thing number two, you're going to need some kind of super glue or crazy glue. I use Craggle. Uh, again, reasonably cheap. Um, it's not as cheap as sometimes I would like it. Sometimes I say, oh, it's like $3. I don't want to pay, you know, $2.53 dollars for a tube of crazy glue. But that's where we're at. That's, that's what you have to pay. So you kind of need it. You can buy more expensive glues. You can buy the special hobby glues that melt the plastic together and seal it that way. I personally don't. I think this is about as good as, as you can hope for. I like to be able to pull things apart if I make a mistake. You do have to be careful because it will leave globs that sometimes can leave a texture on the surface. So I'll um, I'll actually take a little scrap of, of newspaper that I'm painting on or whatever. And if I get too big a glob on it, I'll, I'll just kind of sponge it off with this. Otherwise, don't use this on stuff that's already painted. Uh, always glue your stuff together before doing that final layer of paint because it will leave a white chalky residue. And you don't want that on nicely painted stuff. So there, there's two things. That's pretty cheap. You can... You know, most people are going to be able to afford these two things. And then you can assemble your models and then you can start playing. And so some people are just satisfied with that. But we're going to assume that you're going to want to keep painting. So the next thing that you're going to want, let's dive right into paint brushes and paints. And people are going to tell you not to do this. And so this is going to be a little bit of a an exception to a lot of advice you're going to get. And I use really cheap stuff. Let's start with the paints. So I use these Delta Ceram Coats colors. And primarily I use these because this is what I started with. This was what was lying around in my house. But there's a lot of good things about these. First off, they are really cheap. They are probably less than $1.50. They frequently go on sale for about a dollar US. They come in a, an enormous amount of colors. And the tubes are huge. Like not only are they cheap to buy, but they come with a lot of paint. So these can set you up for a long time. Now, I do want to make one small point real quickly, and this kind of applies to all paints regardless. 
but these hobby paints they're not as common as they used to be it used to be that they just sold these and there were giant aisles of them i don't think i don't think hobby painting craft painting is as common as it used to be so i think they're slowly scaling back the number of colors that are available so i have run into problems like i said i've been doing this for about 25 years and i will find every so often that a paint that i've used for decades will suddenly no longer be available so that's kind of a bummer so when you buy these things, you know, after you get used to it and after you find colors that work well for you, maybe pick up a couple tubes. Even though a tube like this will last you for years, you know, you'd hate to be making a Warhammer army and you're using this one particular color and you've painted like 50 guys with that color and then all of a sudden that color isn't available anymore. So just, I don't know, just keep it in mind. I'm going to talk about these things for a little bit more though. So the thing about these craft paints is that they're a lot thicker. In, in, in most cases. There are a couple that will be surprisingly thin. Uh, bright yellow, burnt umber, purple. Those will be really thin and they'll surprise you sometimes. But normally these things are very thick, clumpy almost. You're always going to want to add water to these things. I mean, it's not a very sophisticated job. You don't have to do any complex mixing. You don't need to do a wet palette or anything like that. But normally it just means you get your brush really wet and then you, you kind of dip it in there and mix it and you, you just get it a little bit uh, thinner than you would normally for some of the more expensive paints. Now, it'll also be thicker on the model itself. This isn't as big of a deal as you might think. Now, yes, you can start obscuring detail. You start adding enough of these paints and some of the fine details that you have on faces, on armor, chain links, that kind of thing, they can start to go away. But again, if you thin out the paints, that'll help it a little bit. And the other thing is, is if you highlight, like I do, you will actually add detail to the thing as you paint. So let's say you're painting chain mail and you give yourself a, a base coat of some dark silver, right? And so some of that detail disappeared because this thick paint will go into the cracks, it'll kind of fill them in a little bit, just a little bit and uh, it won't be as detailed as before. Now let's say you go over with a highlight. You take a lighter silver, gray, whatever you're using, and you go over the raised areas. Maybe you're dry brushing, maybe you're layering, whatever. Because that paint is so thick, those raised areas will suddenly get thicker. So you're almost adding in more detail. Let's take faces. You do a base coat of this paint on a face. The face will kind of flatten out because the paint is so thick. But then you go back and you highlight the nose, the lips, the chin, that kind of thing. That'll add thickness to just those areas so the detail almost comes back. Now, it won't be as sharp. Like, it does have a problem with very sharp, narrow edges, that kind of thing. But if that's not a problem to you, and again, this is, you'd have to look really closely to see this kind of, kind of difference. But it's something to keep in mind. It will tend to blunt very, very sharp surfaces but for normal details using this paint and let's let's give you an example here is a guy that I'm painting right now let's move my light over here so he's about part way done and looking at this guy right here I'd be surprised if anyone can say oh that detail has become obscured there's all those feathers in there, and that's a perfect example because I went and I put a base color in there, and it kind of filled in a lot of the details, but then I went in with a dry brush and a highlighting layer and all that, and a lot of those details came back. And I'm not talking about just visually with the lightness of the color. I'm talking actual texture. They have become thicker. Anyway, and keep it in mind, when I go to do shield designs, that kind of thing, when I paint in those shields, and especially when I go and highlight those designs, those actually become raised from the surface of the shield. So let's see. So like I said, that guy's only about halfway done, but let's give you an example. Here's a little squig that I've been paint that I painted a long time ago. Let's give another example. Two more examples. Here's a here's Night Models saber tooth. And here's an old um, Dogs of War duelist. So anyway, the point is here is that you can achieve good results even with these really inexpensive paints. And for someone just starting off, I would say, yeah, start with those. 
don't spend a lot of money on these tiny pots of paint because you're going to want to experiment and having more money to try different things will allow you to do that. Plus, these come in a really wide range of colors. I mean, there's probably a lot more options in these craft paints than you would have with the normal miniatures paints. And a lot of them are colors that miniature paints probably don't focus on. A lot of um, uh, teals, mauves, um, kind of duller, more natural colors. Anyway, uh, take a look, you see what I mean. Let's go on to paintbrushes. So here's one thing about these paints though. They tend to ruin paintbrushes. They are thick, they dry quickly, they, they wreck paintbrushes. So, hey, what's the solution? Buy cheap paintbrushes. Don't go out and buy a $15 paintbrush. Yes, theoretically you can take a $15 paintbrush and you can use it for the rest of your career and it'll be great. But, you know, you could buy your $15 paintbrush and you can treat it super nicely and then you can just drop it on the floor one day. Or your four-year-old gets a hold of it and he decides to, you know, use all his strength to paint the kitchen table. Um, what am I using these days? I'm using these Royal and Langnickel brushes I got at Home Depot. They're like $2 each. Um, they're okay. I do miss my old low Cornell brushes that I used to buy in these super cheap packs. And, you know, like a third of them would be bad and I couldn't even use them. But... And they were just nice. I was just used to them. I liked them. So you see this one here is all ratty and shot up. And that's a good point too. When you just start out, you want at least two brushes. You want a bigger, thicker brush because you're going to want to mix paints. You're going to want to cover large surfaces from time to time. Um, and you're going to want a detail brush. You're going to want a small one. And that's really all you need to start with. So buy yourself two cheap paint brushes and then just be aware you're going to replace them. These tips are going to get bent right here. You know, you're using these thick paints. They're drying out on your brush. Uh, yeah, you should wash your brushes frequently because that'll keep them nicer longer. But sometimes you've got that nice consistency of the paint. You're almost done with that thing. You just keep that paint on a little bit longer than you should and it starts to go bad. Or let's say, you know, you've got this tiny crack in there, you know you shouldn't dry brush with this nice brush, but it's right there in your hand and you can't resist the temptation and that's what you do. Oh, speaking of resisting temptation. So these things, these tips, they'll start to curl as they go bad. Don't take a pair of scissors and snip them off. That never works. The scissors will actually bend the brush tip some more. It's not great. What you can do is you can take your Zacto blade and you can set them there and you can carefully cut off the tip that's going bad. And that'll save it for a little bit, that'll be okay. And frequently these, these very tips will be so thin and so long that they'll just have this bit that you just don't want on there anyway. So if it's like one hair that sticks out and bends, then you can just take your, uh, your Zacto blade and hack that off and it should be okay. You know, just you know, use a nice sharp blade do it carefully, don't use scissors, and you're all right. And when your brushes start to go bad, that's when you get more brushes to dry brush with and mix paints with and do all the stuff that you don't want to use your nice brushes to do. So always keep them around. Look at all these, here. Look at all these garbage brushes that I have in here, different kinds, different sorts. When my brushes start to go bad, I've started taking a little bit of painter's tape and marking it around the handles so I know which are my good brushes and which are not. This one's still a bad brush, so just ignore that for the time being. But yeah, that's brushes. Buy cheap brushes uh, when you use cheap paints, and you should be fine. Okay, um, things that you absolutely need, all right. Uh, you need a cup to hold water. Here's my solo cup, you know, whatever use whatever you like. You need a light source. Do you need a daylight bulb or something special? Do you need two light sources to give you the diffuse light so you don't have any shadows? No, you don't need any of that. You need a, a lamp. You need something that emits a, a fair amount of light so that you can work. Don't try to work without light. It'll drive you crazy. It'll really mess up your eyes and maybe you can do it when you're young, but when you're old like me, it's just, it's just not that much fun. Get yourself a good light source if you don't have one already. You should have most of this stuff. So what have we got to start? You got Zacto Blade, you've got Crazy Glue, you've got paintbrushes, you got paint, you know, these $2, these dollar, you know, you're doing pretty good. 
you got your light, you got your cup. Okay, last thing. This is the only thing that you absolutely probably need that's actually gonna cost you real money. This is a two-part epoxy putty, green stuff, blue stuff. It's the stuff that just smushed together and used to fill gaps and sculpt small details. Can you get away with this? Technically, yes, but so many plastic models, so many metal models come with big gaps in them or they come with, you know, stuff on the base or whatever, you know, it's stuff that you've got to fill in. If you try to paint that stuff without filling in those gaps, it's never going to look great. Those gaps are always going to be there. Now, the nice thing about these cheap paints is that they do fill in some of the stuff. You don't have to be an expert modeler in a lot of these cases because using this thick paint, it'll kind of cover up some of the fingerprints that you might leave in these things, some of the cracks, but it won't fill up anything very big. So you kind of want to use this and it can get a little expensive, which I'm, I'm sorry about. Um, you know, if you want to get away with it, you know, absolutely, this is your hobby. You can do what you like, but I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I, I think you kind of need it. So that's it for the stuff that you need. But anyway, you can set yourself up with painting for a long time for about $20. And maybe $20 sounds like a bit of a shock because you've already paid, you know, maybe $100 for a starter set and you paid, you know, you know maybe you don't want to pay that. But you got to pay something, you know, unless you have this stuff sitting around. And honestly, you probably do have a lot of this stuff sitting around. But uh, otherwise, yeah, okay, there it is. I just want you to know about it. But that's not too bad, really. It's certainly better than getting your, you know, your wet palette and your photo flow and your daylight bulb and your, you know, all that expensive things. You don't need it. This is just the basics. Let's move on. Here's the things that I would actually recommend, but you don't necessarily have to have. Now, I have a paint tray. Do you need a paint tray? No. You can use a plastic, uh, plastic plate. You can use uh, an acoustic ceiling tile. You can use, I know one guy who used a paper napkin. You know, that's what he put his paint on. I wouldn't recommend that. I, I don't know what he did. He might have been crazy. But anyway, take something that's non-absorbent. You know, if it absorbs the moisture, it's going to be a real struggle. Take something flat, you know. If you have little divot, divots in here that you can mix the paints in, I think that's ideal. This, you can get at Michael's for a dollar. It doesn't last forever, but it lasts next to forever. I think I have to exchange these every 20 years, you know. And you can see this thing is all chewed up. It is gross and marked up, it still works fine. Um, you know, I'll have this next year. And they cost a dollar, you know? But anyway, use what you like, just some surface to mix paints on. Yes, you can use a, a plastic plate, you know? It's fine, just, you know, I would recommend something. Uh, what else? Yeah, okay, let's go into this. All right, um, here's my confession. I painted for years and years and years without using a spray base coat, without spray painting a base coat on. I would actually take a very thin pool of white paint, I would take a big garbage brush, and I would actually coat the whole model in white paint. I can go, I can go into more detail, I can, I can tell you how crazy I was. I would actually go and I would paint the whole model with a brush with white paint, and then I would go and I would do what's called black lining. This is this is old school stuff right here. No one, no one should do this like ever, and they certainly don't do it now. I would take black paint and I would outline all the areas where one color would touch another. So I'd make like a uh, paint by numbers kind of thing. So it's kind of like I have a light color where the, where the normal colors go and then in all the cracks I would have a black color and then I would fill everything in later. Don't, ignore all that, don't do that. But the point is you can in fact get away without a spray on base coat without spray painting on your your initial uh, uh, base coat of paint you can actually paint it on but it's a pain it takes a long time to dry it doesn't give you a gr very even nice surface it's very clumpy it's very streaky i just don't recommend it I have finally gone and I have gone and I got a spray on base coat. I just spray everything black. It's really quick, it's really fast, but it is pricey. This stuff is kind of expensive. I mean, it's like $18 for a can of this and it doesn't really last that long. So if, if budget is on your mind, 
you know, if you really have to watch what you're spending, especially initially, maybe you're just trying out a couple paints to see if you like the hobby, then, you know, you can, you can do without it. But as soon as you kind of have the opportunity to do so, get yourself a can of black spray paint. It makes a nicer surface to start with. It saves you a lot of time and it's just handy. And I use the Citadel stuff. Oops, I bumped my camera. I'm sorry about that. Um, I use the Citadel stuff. There's other kinds. I'm sure there's cheaper kinds, but it's, I, I know I can buy it at my hobby store. I know it works well. Don't use just, and, and here's the thing where you don't really want to go cheap on. You know, you can go cheap on your basic paints. You can go cheap on your modeling stuff. Don't go cheap on spray paint. Don't go to Home Depot and buy any old spray paint and think, you know, that'll work out okay. It will not. It will turn your model into an unsightly glob of paint. So, you know, are, are there substitutes that might be a little cheaper? Yes, but not by a lot. Get nice spray paint or don't use any. Okay, so enough of that. Enough of the bad news. Now let's go on to other things that you can uh, work with. Um, got a little sculpting tool. This is just a basic dental tool. Got a flat end, got a little knife end. Uh, I think it's used for um, making, what do you call them, fillings for dentists. They sell these at craft stores for this exact purpose. Um, do you need them? No. You can take your your modeling putty and you can use your Zacto knife, you can use your finger, you can use whatever surfaces at hand, pencils, uh, popsicle sticks, just toothpicks, whatever. But a uh, sculpting tool, it is nice. I do use them a lot, I do appreciate them. And if you've got a, a buck or two on hand, then I recommend it. So last thing that you really should consider, something to protect the models with. If you're gaming with these, I really hate chips. I really hate rubbing the paint off the ends of the models. I, I really hate going over and, and fixing things that I've already painted. I want to keep them nice. Get yourself some brush on varnish. Here's the super cheap stuff. Um, you don't have to get this. I, I would say experiment. I'm not 100% on this particular brand but get brush on and get matte. So matte, don't get the gloss. Even the matte stuff is actually kind of shiny as you can see from my models here. Uh, it will get less shiny over time. For whatever reason, it comes on really shiny and like for a couple of weeks, it'll be really glossy and you'll think, oh, what did I do? Well, over time, it goes away. I don't know why. It seems to still protect it fine, but the shine will eventually die down. So there's some good news there. Now, if you want to go like really flat, if you don't want the shine at all, you can go with this spray on stuff. Like here's City Little Purity Seal, it's spray on varnish. Uh, yeah, that'll be really flat. Um, but here's the thing, I don't find these things, I don't think they protect the models really well. Like I've used that stuff before and I'll still get chips, I'll still get damaged areas. That brush on stuff, you put that on, those will protect your models you should not have a problem keeping your models nice for the rest of the time. Now, what you could do is you could brush on that varnish and then it's kind of got that glossy sheen to it. And then you could hit it with the, uh, the spray matte varnish and that'll actually completely eliminate the, the shine and it'll be a really well protected model. And that's what I used to do for a long time. And then I just kind of stopped. I just basically cut out that extra step. I decided I could live with the shine, it's fine. The thing you wanna keep in mind though, is for whatever reason, hitting it with those two coats changes the colors. I mean, your colors will even get changed using just the regular brush on varnish. You'll find things maybe don't stand out as well as they used to. They don't look exactly like you did when you just painted it. I'm personally willing to accept that. You know, that's a sacrifice that I make in order to keep my models nice. You may feel differently, but, you know, putting on the additional step of putting on that spray matte varnish will change the colors more. So, you know, just fair warning on that one right there. So anyway, brush on, varnish, brush on varnish, sculpting tool, you know, your, your spray paint for your base coat, uh, a tray. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more expensive here, but it's still not too bad. All right, so that's my advice. That's my advice for painting. This is the stuff that I would use on every model. I'm gonna clear some room here. 
and I'm going to go into a couple of the things that are really not necessary. You could do without them. I don't use them on every model, but you know, I do have them. I do use them a lot. So I'm going to I'm going to mention them and you can take from that what you will. Okay. First thing. White glue, PVA glue, Elmer's glue, all that kind of stuff. Now, I use this for only two things. I use this for gluing the basing material to the base, and I use them for gluing paper banners to my standard bearers. Uh, you may not need to do this. A lot of models now have their own textured special bases. You might not need to glue anything to it. Um, you might not use paper banners. A lot of models now use those sculpted banners, or you might not use standards at all. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I use it for those two things. Let's go into basing material. Now, a lot of bases come pretty flat. Um, so if you don't want to sculpt everything with your your green stuff or whatever, one thing about green stuff, I know I mentioned it's expensive, but it does last a really long time. So it's not like if you use it for your basing material, you're going to run out of it really soon. But anyway, there, here is my crummy Tupperware filled with sand, basic garden variety sand. I mean, I didn't pick this up from the beach or anything. This did come from a bag at Home Depot, but um, you know, I use that too. And of course, this is super old school. This is what people used to do in the 1980s. You coat the top of the model with glue, you sprinkle on sand, and then you paint it like grass. No one does this anymore. You know, if you want to be more today, paint it rock or earth color or whatever, and then use flock if you want. You know, this is all optional. You'll see this guy here. I added some, some leaves. That's just these basil leaves uh, glued on with white glue and sprinkled on and painted like everything else. You can do that. You, can, you know what? The basing is completely up to you. But don't leave the bases blank. Don't leave them flat and black. It looks not good. Do something with them. You know, there's lots of cheap basing materials. There's lots of ways to do it. Just, yeah, something, anything. Doesn't matter. Anyway, go on to the next one. Clippers. Do you need fancy, you know, clippers that are flat on the one side to get models off of sprues or to cut big things? No, I just use wire cutters. You should have them in your house already. So, you know, are they absolutely necessary? No, you can do everything with your Zacto blade, but clippers are handy. Um, files, mm, these are really nice. Now, not nice as in they're expensive or I maintain them really well or anything like that. They are, again, super cheap. You can get them at craft stores. But they're just these tiny little files, and I use those to take off flash. I use those for sculpting sometimes, just evening out rough edges of models. I use them a lot. You don't technically need them. A lot of people say don't use them on plastic or resin. I do anyway. They work pretty well. You know, you got a couple bucks to spare and you want to make modeling easier, use those things. Pin vise, little drill. I use it all the time. And I don't even like pinning things very much. Of course, pinning is the thing where if you've got two parts of a model and you think it might break off, you drill a hole in one end, you drill a hole in the other end, and you stick a little piece of paper clip or something in between them to give it a little bit extra support. I don't do that a whole lot. I, I you know, I, I just don't. I don't think it's necessary for most models. But I end up using this thing a lot. Sometimes you just need to drill a hole into a base or, you know, you, you, you want to drill out a certain detail or something like that. I don't really know how expensive these things are. Not very. You can get them at hardware stores, get them at craft stores. I just find a lot of uses for them. And sometimes, yeah, you don't really want to take your Zacto and go and burrow a hole like this onto something. So, I like that. What else do we have? Uh, <laughs> this is super not necessary. Um, jeweler's saw little hacksaw like this. This is kind of for when you want to get into converting, sculpting, modeling, making big changes to your models. You know, you want to take off some big metals, metal model's arm and replace it with something else. And you really don't want to, you know, have to carefully scrape this away with your Zacto blade and maybe your clippers won't fit in that. But 
you know, this thing works great for, for heads, especially, you know, you got a metal model and it's got an arm going up here and I'm going up there and you can't get in to clip off that model's head, but you can slip this thing in and saw it off really easily. And the nice thing about this is that they're nice and thin. So you usually get to keep whatever part you just popped off. I mean, you could, you could just hack off whatever you have, but you know, why, why waste some cool helmet or something like that? So again, super not necessary. I like it. Um, along those same lines, Something you're really not gonna need right away, but eventually, here's your Dremel. You know, that box is too big for where I have my camera set up. I went for years and years without using a Dremel, but uh, they're nice. When you want to really change things around, when you really want to convert things, and again, you know, this could be, you know, this could be like 10 years down the road in the hobby, or it might be right away if you want to really mess stuff up and make it look it could look like your own. The Dremel is an investment, but it does a lot of things that you'd be hard pressed to in a reasonable amount of time uh, to do. Um, I, uh, you know, grinding out big details, things on the model. Uh, you know, you don't want to sit here and hack them away slowly over a long period of time. That Dremel, you just take one of those little grinder bits and just just shave it off, and there it goes. That's everything that I use on a regular basis that I think that you might need and th things that I think that you absolutely do need. Uh, yeah, now, again, I mentioned this when I was talking about the Dremel. A lot of this stuff, you're exchanging time for money. So the things that you're saving in money, the things that you're not investing in with cash, you can do the same thing, but it's gonna take you longer. You don't want to use a spray paint to do that first layer of paint. You know, you don't, you know, you don't have to, but it's going to take you longer to paint it, to brush it on, and then to let it dry. Uh, you don't want to buy a Dremel or a jeweler saw or something like that to do a lot of conversions. You can do all that stuff with your ordinary tools. It's just going to take you longer. Same thing with the paints. You know, maybe these nicer paints that you can buy, they're more expensive and they go on really quickly and easily and they give you an effect that you're looking for. Maybe you can do that exact same thing with these cheaper paints, but it'll take you a couple layers to do it. You have to learn certain techniques. You have to put on the base color, and then you have to apply a wash and then a highlight and that kind of thing where maybe you can just slop on these like expensive inks or whatever, and you can do the same thing quicker. So it's really up to you. If you would rather spend your money on models if you have the time to spend to get a nice effect with some of these less professional grade materials that that is a choice that you can make don't let anyone tell you differently i just want to give a different voice out there saying that you can do stuff cheaply and you can get going on this stuff right away hope that helps and i'll see you on the next one